My grandmother tells me how blessed I am and talks to me about kids in other countries that don't have access to education, health care, and medication so that they won't die from diseases like HIV, AIDS, and other diseases that plague their community. So we're going to cut the lights off and start. When people come in, you know, just have them be quiet and everybody respect everybody else's time. After the panel discussion, actually we're going to have a ra raffle right about now, right? About right? Now, we're yeah, we're going to do a raffle and then we're going to do the screening. That's an hour and two minutes. Then a panel discussion and then dinner will be served. And um, we have real food, beans and rice and cornbread and... <laughs> what else is there? And chicken, fried chicken. How could I forget that? I don't like what it means. So thank you all for coming, and we're going to cut off the lights and go ahead and get started. All right? Thank so you. right now what we're going to do is have some open discussion about the film, and then we're gonna, we have some guests here that are going to come up and talk about um, their lives and living with HIV. And answer any questions that you guys have. I want to thank you, Cynthia, uh, for bringing my attention to the video. This is very, very heavy. <laughs> very heavy. I had not seen it or heard of it. So um, I, I, I'm going to make it required viewing for my staff. It's just, uh, it's really unfortunate that that stuff is going on in the United States. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, 30 years ago, you know, in San Francisco, I saw people looking like the mama looked, and I mean, it's devastating to me. It's so heavy. It's like, wow, unbelievable. But ignorance is uh, blessed, as they say. Um, so, you know, I mean, I have friends that have been living with HIV for 30 years, and they're healthy. And, you know, I'm just glad we're from the Bay Area. Um, we have mobile units, and we never put the word AIDS or HIV on it when we're out in the uh, community. We actually have the mobile unit out front and we're doing HIV testing. We didn't do enough outreach to actually get, because I think we have, we don't have a lot of people that need to be tested, but uh, the next time I show it, and I'm absolutely going to show it again. But um, unfortunately, you have ignorant people all over. And uh, that Facebook thing, hey, Where's the young people? They need to understand. You can't put stuff on Facebook. It, and it follows you for life. It follows you for life. You cannot go back and erase it. Somebody's going to have that information. So, you know, there was lots of lessons to be learned and lots of things that are on this video. And it's sad, but as ignorant as some of those people are, we have some of those that are right here in the Bay Area. They're that ignorant. Um, I mean, we are, are blessed because we are living with HIV and AIDS now, not dying. I, I just can't believe that they let that woman die like that. But, I mean, I can believe it, but it's just awful. I want to say something. Yeah, can I give you an update on today's show? Yes. Yes, please. So, um, I've seen the video several times. Um, I saw Deshelle and Wilhelmina about a month ago. Ooh, wow. So um, there's some really good news. Um, they are traveling, so she's doing what she wants to do in terms of speaking out and sharing her story. They are traveling throughout the Southeast where the, the, the epidemic in the Southeast in rural Southern states is, um, is beyond comprehension for us here. Um, when you have to drive, 80 miles to get medication and, and care. Um, so they are sharing their story um, with you know people throughout the Southeast and it's starting to have an effect. And she's grown into a, a really lovely young woman. Um, at the time that I saw her, Monica, again, the singer surprised her because the reason why she got all of that, you know, hating stuff was because of the, because she had the connection with Monica. Right. And when Monica wow. found out that people were doing this to her because of the connection with her, right. um, so she came to talk to Deshelle and she really broke down and, and cried about that because that was not her intention. Right. So her intention is to stay connected with Deshelle and to, you know, to keep rising her up. Um, and that was the inspiration for World's Still I Rise campaign. Um, our hope is to 
to do things here in the, in the East Bay, but also to see if we can replicate it in the Southeast. The other thing that I want to say is uh, one of the things that Cynthia and I and a few other people are fighting for is prevention dollars. You know, uh, people keep trying to just do care and treatment, which is wonderful, but you don't have to get AIDS. AIDS is 100% preventable. Okay. And it just makes no sense for them to spend as less dollars as they do on prevention. It's insulting. It's insulting that we get funding. Our funding is either for women, for men, for gay men. And it's like, it takes two to tango. You need to talk to the whole family. And so we do, but <laughs> that's not what our funding is for. Make no mistake, you know, we break the rules because we have to. You know, we live in these communities. These are our people. So. I think you should tell people about the baby that was born positive. I think you should. Okay. <laughs> so before we um, get too proud of ourselves for living in uh, civilization, uh, you need to know. Oh, okay. You need to know that in December we had a baby born positive in our community. And, you know, this is, we are located across the bridge from one of the most sophisticated, richest, you know, area where HIV was first, you know, first basically found. And, you know, just across the river, we had a baby born, the first one in eight years. So the lesson about that is that we cannot take anything for granted that we still need prevention, that we still need Ryan White, that we still need to be vigilant uh, because no baby should be born, certainly not in a rich place like the Bay Area. We have about 150 to 200 babies that are born every year in this country. And most of them are born in the Southeast and most of them are black babies. So, um, but it should not be happening here. And it is a sin and a shame that it is. It's not something we should say, oh, well, it just happens. It's not that many. It's not necessary. So just wanted to let you know. We'll be talking about this. Amen. So our panel, if we can have them come up, are we going to do another raffle? Yes, we are. Okay. Let's do another raffle. And then we're going to have our panel. And uh, we can ask questions. People can talk about whatever they want to. Or they can answer, you can ask questions and about the video if you want. Or you can ask questions to Cynthia or myself if you'd like. Okay, I'm not going to look. Let's see. <laughs> the last numbers are 221. 221. Who's? Somebody got it? Raise your hand if you have it. Two, two, one. Two, two, one. Me. Two, two, one. All right, come on up. There you go. You can take it to All right. So welcome, everybody. So um, this is the wonderful Denise from the world. Um, she's going to support us with uh, any questions that you all may have for the ladies up here. Um, I want you guys to start at the end here and introduce yourself. Um, my name's Regina. We're here to say hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's Regina. And what's the question? Introduce yourself, who you are, the love of you. I, I miss Vicky. I'm Lynn. I'm Tamara. No, so this is our panel. Um, anybody have any questions that you would like to ask any of our lovely ladies up here? Um, any comments? So I'm. I would like to know um, how you felt watching the film. Did it? Did it relate to you in any way? Um, what kind of emotions came up when you, while watching the film? I was totally affected from uh, the part of the, uh, her having five other family members. Uh, I also had five other family members. I'm the only one of them living. Uh, Saturday, I will be positive 22 years on the 12th, this Saturday. 
Wilhelmina's story. It's a, it's a, one part I did really get out, one part I did was we need to go back when we get our diagnosis and do more mental health mm -hmm. and find out where our life skills are and not lose our life skills and try to keep living. I think I was affected more by the ignorance of our politicians mm -hmm. <laughs> that are supposed to be educated and, and re-elected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, you know, it's amazing to me. Because you live with your grandma too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was born with it. So Deshaun's story really connected with you. It related to me because they shot story related to me because of course my granddaughter is living with HIV AIDS and when she was born um, we didn't even know that she had it. She came home with me and it took about maybe four or five months before we realized that she was HIV positive. Um, when she came home her mother didn't even know that she was HIV positive. I had to let her know um, and you know and with Dejan, what I noticed was, uh, for Tahara, let me say that the reason I started her <coughs> to, I started the foundation that I started nine years ago, is because she began to be teased at her school. She was in an after school program, and one of her cousins found out that she was HIV positive through her mom who was talking about it. So the kids at school teased her at her after school program. And actually, the teacher asked me, she said, well, I didn't know. Uh, these kids were teasing to her about being HIV, and I told them, she's not HIV positive. So at that point, see, 30 years prior to that, I went to schools and churches educating people about HIV AIDS. I traveled all over the state educating people. 30 years later, my granddaughter was born with it. And the stigma was still here. I was just, you know, profoundly affected by that when, when the school didn't even, and then when I talked to some of the teachers, I decided I needed to talk to some of them. They weren't even educated about it. You know, that's 30 years. And then I went to enroll her at the age of five in a school, a Christian school, and they questioned whether or not they could accept her. You know, and that really took me back. So since that time, I've taken her to three different schools. Two of them questioned whether or not they would accept her. The third one she's in now, and they won't let her speak about her HIV AIDS status. They tell me they don't want to advertise her HIV AIDS. I haven't taken her out of the school because I think if I take her out of this school, she's got to go to another school. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be the same thing. But here she does know the students. She, Tata speaks everywhere. She goes out and speaks wherever mm -hmm. we can get her to speak. In our community, she started a book club because we wanted to start a book club in our community where kids are there affected by HIV AIDS and don't speak about it. So when we do the events every year, it's helped to empower her and help her to want to speak out. And then she's connected with other kids that are her age mm -hmm. that are now going with her to speak out, mm -hmm. you know. But we still got to remember at her school, they won't even let her speak out. So why I connected with that young lady that was speaking is because if she doesn't, we don't keep our arms around these young kids. Mm -hmm. And if they aren't allowed to speak out, I have to honestly say this, at her hospital where she goes to, to her husband speaking out, they suggested that she did not speak out. Wow. I said, no. My granddaughter is being affected by this illness. You know, people are teasing her. I want to start her now mm -hmm. to know that she is somebody. She does not have to be afraid yeah. to use her voice, yeah. you know, to change things. <coughs> we went to a Christmas party there, and they invited us to go to a camping trip. On the camping trip, the kids are allowed to go. They don't have to talk about their illness. They can play with each other and they have fun. But what happens when they come back home? Yeah, right. You know? So I told them, no, I'm going to speak. And she's going to speak. And of course, I talked to my granddaughter. And we talked to each other. And I explained to her. I was diagnosed with lupus at the age of 17. Stigma affected me really heavy. I didn't even know I had the disease. The doctors knew nothing about it. They told my mother maybe I should see a counselor. 
because there's nothing wrong with me. At the age of 20, they found out that I had lupus. But I had to live with that stigma. My parents thought I was lying to them, all kinds of things. I didn't want her. I have a granddaughter that died from sickle cell disease. It wasn't the disease that killed her. It was the stigma, the complications from the disease that killed her. And I did not want that to happen to her. So yes, I start her. She speaks out. And I'm right there by her side. And I'm going to support her. And it's not only that stigma. Our kids, the poverty, the lack of education, those things are what affect them. And they're not taught. You know, they don't have the resources. It's like, and let me say now, thank you, Gloria and World, for all you do. You know, for all you do to change things. Because if we don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. Nobody else is going to do it. We have to do that. So I stand strong with my granddaughter. And when I saw that movie, yes, it impacted me. Because it is sad to see. And I teach her that too in other countries. There are kids that are dying in Africa and other countries that are dying. I want her to see that. I want her to see that you do have opportunity here. And for me, the big thing for her is getting an education. Because for her, that young lady, that was a big problem. The lack of education, you know. So that impacted her greatly, you know. But there's a way, and I just thank God for people that are doing things to change it and that continue to reach out to make a difference. And that's what's important, us doing just that. And again, thank you guys for all you do. So um, do you have anything that you would like to share? Really, right? yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that affected you in the video? Well, it's just the ignorance that still exists. You know, even as she's talking about the schools here in California, things are unheard of. You know, I remember this probably it was 2004. I had I had cut my finger, and I called the ambulance to take me to the doctor. And the paramedics were scared of me when I was. And this was 2004, and there were paramedics. They were scared of my blood. You know. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of work still to be done. Are there any questions? Anybody else have any questions? Yes. Okay. Hi there. Thank you so much for your commentary. Um, this is to the woman at the end. You mentioned that you started a foundation. Can you talk a little bit about what you do? Um, uh, the every work year we do a bit in our community, and it's a health fair, and we bring people in to bring resources, and sometimes we have people speak. You know, and like I said, she started a book club. And the object of the book club is for the kids to learn to read about health, culture, science, <coughs> other things. And we want to bring people in. Because in our communities, we don't have that. People don't come in and talk about things like this to kids, you know, or educate them. So we want them to read the books that they read on health, science, culture, or whatever. We'll have somebody come in like, world or like Calpep come in after they've read books that they've read. This is my passion and this is what I really want to see because I'm going to keep working on that. Because the key is we don't have the resources for our kids. They are not educated. The schools are not really, they're failing them, you know. And these kids are not reading and they're not learning. And you know, a lot of times they don't get outside of their community so they can see other things and do other things. So now what we've been doing with the book club, we've been taking the kids outside of the community. They go to colleges, you know, and they're able to reach out. So they'll know about their education. They come back and they're going to be reading and learning. And we want to invite people in to come in and speak after these kids have read books that they've shared about health or whatever. Bring somebody in. Let them share what they've read. You know, this keeps it moving and keeps it going. We can't just say it one day and then the next day the kids miss it. You know, Tahara wrote a book. It was me. I, I co-authored with her. We want to see it get into the school. And let me tell you something. I know it takes money to do what we're doing and what you're doing. It takes money. For me, I want to be able to reach out to make sure that this keeps going, that people are like you are still able to get the money that they need to help us. You know, you know I, I don't have money. I'm poor. You know, so, but my granddaughter is important to me, and the kids in my community are important. And unless we all work together to change it, we're not going to be able to change it. So for me, that's what's important, and that's what I want to do. And that's why I do the health fairs every year. I've been doing this for nine years, and I didn't get funding. 
I save my money so that I can do those events because it's very important to me, you know, for so many reasons. Like I told you, I have a granddaughter that died from an illness. I'm living with one, and my granddaughter's living with this one now. And again, I'll say, if we don't do it, nobody else is going to do it for us. Right. Right. Ms. Vicki, is there anything that you would like to share about the movie? Are you late? Uh, I was just sitting here thinking, I remember 24 appeals a day. I was diagnosed in 94, uh, March the 12th at 3.30 p.m. It was like a, a death sentence. Uh, coming to the world and walking into the room and seeing a, that room of women that are, you're not alone, and now being educated to where I'm speaking out. I just did an article for San Francisco Chronicle. I saw it. Uh, and it's nationwide. I've been getting calls from all over the world. Wow, it's like, good. yes, that's me. Okay. And yes, I'm healthy. And yes, I'm doing well. Um, I've just had a, a, a young girl, a close friend, uh, pass away. And I'm sure she knew my diagnosis. Uh, also, I've said five other family members. Now I'm educated enough to where I, I'm angry at myself that I wasn't able to help my family because of my ignorance. Um, I'm able now, now I'm empowered, now I'm strengthful, now I'm educated. Now I speak out and now I want to be that face to help someone else. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first I'm to say about the movie, I was a bad model, how they look, the uh, lady died doctors and they didn't like get, took her off her medicine, they didn't do nothing for her, they didn't give her no IV, they just like they didn't care about her, you know, and that was kinda sad. And um another thing when the what's her name? The daughter? They said Yeah, when she, you know, was so happy she got on the um, internet, you know, <laughs> shared her story about it, you know, about and all them she got people was gonna be excited and how they just went bad on her, you know, so like you said, people are just scared it. I, I mean, if you don't know about it, because I was like that when I didn't know nothing about it in the 70s, you know, my first, I had two gay friends died of AIDS, I didn't know nothing about it then. I was like her too, it's like she, she might have digged in my bag, and I'm like, oh, she had to know. I'm like, catch, I didn't know, because, you know, I know now because, you know, I'm educated now, and so, um, and they said they only had that one truck, sorry, that one van, and they said it's all those people, and and they said they only had that one truck, sorry, that one van for all those people, you know, in the whole city, you know, so. Now and they probably didn't have no support groups and none of that like we have out here. So you know, you know, I still don't, you know, some stuff I still don't know, but I feel I can educate people. I still haven't disclosed myself to everybody yet. My own family, my kids don't know nobody. So you know, I feel I don't have to tell anybody. So I don't feel like I'm dying or nothing. So I don't feel like you know. But if I then I think about it again, well, I, sh I should speak on it because it's out there. You know, I'm walking around, I'm wearing the clothes, everything. You know, so you know. And, you know, my cousin found out I had it, and she's like, oh, you touch my toilet seat, and you this and that, and you this and that, and I'm like, well, you can't catch it, like this and that, and so now I can tell people about it now, you know, so I'm learning a little more now. I get called to be speaking on panels like this. I go out protesting, not just on HIV, Hep C, everything. I go to classes, studies, uh, everywhere, so, you know, I just did a study on taking out blood so they can find a cure for AIDS and I'm like I don't know if I want to be cured you know what I'm saying I don't know what to do with myself then <laughs> you know I met all you guys through it not saying like that but you know what I'm saying I ain't gonna get no money on that <laughs> <laughs> tell it girl <laughs> but, you know, I'm just kidding for real you know so I don't know what to do well, that's my choice, that's our choice, but I feel Ooh. if they do get it, I don't even know if we're going to be able to afford it. The black people, okay. the poor black people, you know, they're going to probably get it for the rich people. Oh, you know, a triple up, I, the bottle was $2,000. Oh, I'd probably be dead by now. Yeah. I'm not able to afford that. Yeah. But I, I, I know, I've been having it since 1997. I've never been sick, hospitalized for other stuff. My T cells been high, my fire load was low, all that so. I look good, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Grown kids, you know, so grandkids. Yeah. I'm here. Can you say one thing? Um, I, I just I have to say this, Lord. That's my mom back there, uh, Mother Brown. My, all of my siblings have passed away also. When I was diagnosed in 94, I'm still my mother's only child. And, and in that movie, there was a part where Millamina and them had the washing machine, the sink, 
And all them bleach bottles? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we was. My mother had my daughter washing mm -hmm. the toilet, the tub. All our clothes was bleached. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's to say thank you, mother, because we are educated now, and I do her insulin now. She lets me do a diabetic. It's a whole other history. But we went to um, the article. I want to go back here. I did the article last week, and, and still the stigma is out there. I got so many Facebook uh, requests and, and bad messages, really? threatening messages. Oh, wow. People tell me they're going to beat me up outside, and this is a week ago, so we still have a lot of fight to do. I I but I love you, Mom. Thank you. <laughs> we no more bleach bottles. Are there any more questions? Anybody else? Questions or comments? Anybody have any comments that um, on the movie personally, not necessarily to the panel? Or would anybody like to speak on the movie? Oh, how I, I, I want to say something. Oh, I'm not going to say nothing on the movie, but I do want to say something to this baby. Um, I'm 26, and I support everything my mama does. And I want you to know that, baby, you can do anything. You can do anything. Stand by your grandmother. She's going to be your everything. Believe me. You can do whatever you want to do. Don't let nobody talk down on you. Don't let nobody. I, I walk with this every day. Every day to support my mom. I walk every day with this red ribbon on my, on my wrist because it means something. It means something. Don't let nobody talk down on you. Don't let what nobody got to say about you change your life and your path. That's what I want to let you know. Because it hurt my heart when I found out what you were going through and how young you were. And I had to grow up living under my mom and having people talk down on her and me and everything like that. Do not let that be the reason why you stop doing what you do. And my okay. baby, y'all. My daughter. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like, I'm in the military. I'm ex-Marine. And uh, up until recently, there wasn't a lot of information out there about AIDS. So I was kind of like, you know, it was kind of like don't ask, don't tell policy, they would say. And uh, they didn't really test us for it until, like, 1974. And uh, later on, I found out I had had contact with FC when I was over in Vietnam. So, you know, it's like, I was kind of, I got a little stigmatized and I saw some things that happened that kind of made me feel like it's a hands-off situation. So today, I kind of go out and I share things with other folks. And prevention is the best cure, yes. you know? And I don't care what nobody say, man. And an ounce of prevention, but it's a pound of cure. You know, and if I just keep myself to myself and do what I need to do, then I ain't got to worry about none of those diseases. And I'm proud of that today that I'm clean and sober. I'm doing what I need to be doing and working on my master's degree. All right. Miss Vicki, where do you get first? I want to just, you know, I want to congratulate all of you for having the courage to be up here and to disclose and, and be willing to share for the benefit of other people. <coughs> but Miss Vicki, where do you, where do you get this notion about, you know, uh, doing a an interview that you know is going to go nationwide, um, speaking out the way that you do consistently? Do you have any fear, and what what inspires that? Prayer, faith, um, a lot of prayer, and. Being in this struggle 22 years of how many women have gone on before me uh, that I have to fight for. I have to speak up for Tammy. I have to speak up for the women that I know that were abused in this diagnosis and trauma and try to help them to come into the diagnosis before they get to the end. Mm -hmm. It's just empowering. And, um, like I said, I, I know so many people in the community that aren't speaking up, that are HIV positive, that look up to me. And to see their face and say, yes, you can do this, you can live, because I'm going to be here another time. I'm going to be, I'm going to see a, <laughs> I'm going to see a cure. Yeah. yeah. So it's just empowering to know that, that my face and my voice can help someone else. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you so much. When I started doing this work almost 35 years ago, I know you can't believe it, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I didn't know anybody 
that had AIDS. Since then, I've had a brother that died of AIDS, mm -hmm. and I've had a first cousin in Waco, Texas, that died of AIDS. So I know lots of times people think that you know we're just in it for whatever, but most of us that stay in it for years and years, we have reasons why we stay in it because it's affected our families. Um, there's probably 20 staff of CalPet, and I think all of them have stories that they can tell you about family members. Yeah. You know, brothers and sisters and mothers. And so we all are affected, but we don't have to be. So prevention, I tell you, prevention. And I'm just going to keep fighting. I know the stats, and I know the CDC and the powers that be, they keep talking about treatment. I want to do prevention. I don't think anybody needs to have HIV or AIDS. You know, we've been into AIDS for what, 30 some years? It just does not make any sense mm -hmm. for young men. And we see them, got young men, 22, 19, 18, that's infected with HIV in the Bay Area. Why? Yeah. Something did not get out. Yeah. <laughs> Something did not happen. They did not get the message. They did not get the message. But as bad as it seems, they have our clients that tell us, I want to be positive so I can get services. Awesome. I can't get That's in a drug program, right and now. the only way I can get in a drug That's program so is I can be, if I'm positive, I can get a drug program. Wow. Or awesome. I don't have housing, and the only slot for housing is for people that have HIV and AIDS. I've been there. Can yeah. you believe that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So we just have to keep talking, and you guys, it's just, you know, really, it's, it, I know it's hard, but I can appreciate it so much because that's what it takes, us telling our stories, and we all got it. So thank you again. One more wrap and then we can eat. Right? Oh, that was heavy. There's so many things. I made a whole bunch of notes. So many things I can talk about of the whole movie, believe me, you know. I, I just want to say one more thing. I just cannot believe that people are still blaming prostitutes for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe it. <laughs> you guys just blame the hoe. That's right. You have to get it. It's easier that way. It's easier that way. He said that in the video. He said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's one more thing she wants to say. My granddaughter, when she talked about the medications, that's still a challenge for her. Yeah. You oh, know, right. Yeah. Wanting to take that medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a challenge for her. It will be so, all yeah. of her life. Yes. It's, it's yes. hard for me, and yes. I've had that for 20 yes. years. Mm -hmm. well, thank, thank you again. <laughs> Appreciate it. You. One more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, you guys, we have beans and rice and fried chicken and ooh, some other stuff. So, mm -hmm. And we have places to go. If people want to get their food to go, okay. that's all right, too. I just appreciate you guys for staying until the end. <laughs> Number 224. Two, 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 Regina. Four. Regina. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 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 Regina. Yeah. All right. The food is in this back room. I am a promise. I am a possibility, I am a promise, with a capital P.